Hey friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. We are in my kitchen today and we are gonna do a really fun experiment. We are going to freeze dry fruit and we are gonna dehydrate the same fruit. So we are gonna run an experiment to see the difference between a freeze dryer and a food dehydrator. This is just the start of exploring the difference between a freeze dryer and a food dehydrator. I have never done a side-by-side -side comparison, so I thought it'd be fun if we could do this together. Some of these fruits I've dehydrated and none of these fruits I've ever freeze dried before. I've had some freeze dried fruits in cereals and things like that, but never anything that's homegrown. These are all store-bought fruits today. I wanna to talk about how dehydration works. A dehydrator works with heat. Food dehydration has been around since basically the beginning of humans. It's the most primitive way to preserve food. And they have found de dehydrated things in clay pots that date back thousands and thousands of years. Because without dehydration, then food is gonna go bad. How it works in a modern food dehydrator is it has a motor that has some heat that comes out with a fan and that draws off the moisture. And with a food dehydrator, you can get about 90 to 94% of the moisture out of the food. And technically, when you're dehydrating food, you are slightly cooking the food. So when it comes to reconstituting the food, the food doesn't necessarily have the same structure and consistency that it does when it was fresh because you have slightly cooked that food. They say you do lose a little bit of the food nutrients when you dehydrate food because it has slightly been cooked. Now the way a freeze dryer works is a freeze dryer is the most modern form of food preservation on the market today. And it was invented during World War II in order to transport blood and blood plasma to the soldiers that were injured at war. And now you can buy a freeze dryer for your home kitchen. For many years, freeze dryers were only found commercial use. The way a freeze dryer works is it drops the temperature of that food down to negative 40 degrees and it's in a vacuum chamber. And what happens is then once that food is frozen, the freeze dryer will start to warm up and that ice or the moisture that's in the food is gonna go from a solid, from ice, to gas. That's called sublimation, when the water goes from a solid state to a gaseous state. Because it's in a vacuum, it vacuums up that moisture and it freezes it on the tube that's around the chamber. So it leaves your food almost 100% without moisture. They say it's about 99% completely moisture free. And because it's done in a cool environment, it's not cooked the food. So the food that goes in a freeze dryer that comes out of a freeze dryer is in the same state. It just has to be reconstituted. So if you put raw fruit in a freeze dryer or raw meat in a freeze dryer and you take it out of a freeze dryer, it's still going to be raw versus if you put meat in a dehydrator because it's using heat and it's cooking it, when you take that meat out of the freeze dryer, you then have jerky. I have a love for dehydrated mangoes, but I've never tried freeze dried mangoes before and I've never dehydrated my own mangoes. So I'm excited to see how this goes. These are very ripe mangoes that I got from the grocery store and it's good that we're taking care of them. I'm gonna peel the skins off these mangoes. These mangoes are about to go bad, and that is one of the really cool things about home preservation, is you can learn to reduce waste. The average American household wastes about 30% of the food that they bring into their house. If you learn how to do home food preservation, then you can help reduce the amount of waste and save yourself a ton of money by preserving the food that you bring into your house. I'm gonna save the seed and I'm gonna chew on the seed after. I have my freeze dryer tray and one of my dehydrator trays here. I think I'm gonna cut this in half. And we're just gonna lay some of the fruit on both trays. The next thing we're gonna freeze dry and dehydrate are some apples. I'm really excited about this because I have three apple trees outside and I love dehydrated apples. I dehydrate them every year, but I've never freeze dried them. And I personally don't like using dried apples to make things like crisps or apple pies because the texture just is a little off to me. I know some people love it and they do it every year and they make pies and crisps out of it, but it's not my favorite. But I think freeze dried, it's gonna come out 
better when reconstituted. And I also make a ton of apple juice, apple cider, from the skins and the peels of apples. And I think reconstituting the apples in that would be fantastic to then turn into a pie or a crisp. You can slice and prepare the fruit for the dehydrator and the freeze dryer however you want. There's no right or wrong answer. Dehydrated pears are one of my new favorite food preservation things I did over this last summer. We have a pear tree and they just turned out so delicious. They're sweet as candy. I left the skins on and they were just fine like that. So I'm going to do the same thing. The only way I'm thinking of eating these is for snacking. And since I liked them so well with the skins on, that's what I'm going to do. Whenever you're preserving food, it's always good to think about how you're going to use that preserved item at, in the end product. Just like with the apples, I wanted to take the skins off because if I'm going to make an apple pie with those, I want no skins on my apples for an apple pie. Versus a pear, I plan to eat these as a snack and I liked the skins on them last time, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it on this time. And that's whatever you're preserving. If you're preserving tomatoes, whatever it might be, and to learn how to preserve it the way you like it the best. Because just because you see me doing a food preservation project and it's one of my favorite things does not mean it's gonna be one of your family's favorite things. I've learned that the hard way. I've watched people online for a long time and I saw that they were doing a specific thing. It looked really delicious to me, so I went ahead and I canned a ton of it or I would freeze a ton of it. Come to find out, my family doesn't eat that, Josh and I don't like it. And so especially when it's the first time you're doing something, it's always good to do a smaller amount as well. So you can see if you and your family enjoy what you preserved. One thing I do know I love dehydrated and I've heard is really good freeze dried are bananas. So we're gonna dehydrate a lot of these because I don't have any dehydrated right now. Bananas naturally have three separate sections to them. So if you take your thumbnail and run it along the inside of the banana, you can get three separate sections. And this is typically how I dehydrate my bananas. Sometimes they'll break a little bit, but that's okay. That way, if I eat this as a snack, I know that three of these sticks equals one banana. I think for the freeze dried bananas though, I want these in discs. So that's how I'm gonna cut these bananas up in. The last thing we are gonna freeze dry and dehydrate is some turmeric root. I purchased a lot of turmeric root because I wanted to plant it. I planted a lot and I still have a lot left over. Turmeric grows just like ginger, it's a rhizome in the ground. It's a tropical root and I'm just gonna take the back of a spoon and I'm gonna use the spoon to peel the turmeric root. Because it's tropical, I don't know how well it's gonna grow in the garden, but we're sure gonna try to get it to grow. We got the turmeric all cleaned up, rinsed off one more time, and now all I'm gonna do is slice it really thin because I'm gonna powder this after it's dehydrated. This is the freeze dryer. This is the dehydrator. I have my smaller dehydrator out today because I didn't have that much, so I didn't need to get my big one out. The thing is with the freeze dryer is there is a step you have to do before you can actually start the freeze drying process. And that is you need to cool this chamber down. This is where the vacuum is formed in your freeze dryer. There's a little valve back here and you want to make sure that's closed in order for the vacuum to be able to form. And then you click start and it says cooling vacuum chamber. Let it cool for 15 minutes and then we can load it up and go to the next step. In the meantime, we can get our dehydrator going. There's no step that needs to happen before you can actually start dehydrating your food. All we have to do is get the dehydrator loaded. This is 
an Excalibur dehydrator. This is one of the higher end dehydrators. I'm gonna link this along with the freeze dryer, the exact size and the exact model and pump I have for my freeze dryer and my food dehydrator. I have two of these. I have a five tray and a nine tray. The reason I love this dehydrator is because it's square. The typical dehydrators that you see on the market, the more affordable ones, are round. And the reason why they're not as functional as an Excalibur is because the heating unit is on the top of them or on the bottom of them. With the Excalibur dehydrator, the heating unit is on the back of them. And it's the only dehydrator I know on the market where the heating unit and fan are on the back and it pushes that heat and dry air forward so you get an even dryness on all of the shelves. If you have one of the round ones where the heating element and fan are on the bottom or the top, the ones closest to the heating element are gonna dry a lot faster. And it's best practice in those situations that you rotate your food so something doesn't get over dehydrated. When you're dehydrating because you are using heat and you want to try to do it at as low of temperature as possible, then you don't want to over dehydrate things because then you're going to overcook them and you're going to lose a little bit more of the nutrients that way. One of the other things I love about the Excalibur dehydrator is it has on the back what temperature the different types of foods you should be dehydrating and so you don't have to do any googling or guessing or anything like that. It's right here. It says for fruit and vegetables you want to dehydrate between 135 degrees and 145 degrees. So I think I'm going to go right in the middle and I'm going to do 140. And we're going to go ahead and get this turned on. And now our food is dehydrating. It's about 6 p.m. tonight. In the morning, we'll check it and we'll see how it goes. It typically takes about 12 to 18 hours to dehydrate fruit. Some of these fruits are a little bit thick like the mangoes, so it might take a little bit longer. The freeze dryer has cooled for 15 minutes, so we can go ahead and get it loaded. It doesn't matter what particular order you put the things in, just get them in there. Because freeze dryers freeze the food first, you can actually do a step ahead and you can put your trays of food in your freezer and then put them in your freeze dryer if you want. If you're going to work with frozen food, you just need to know you can't mix frozen and fresh because the machine senses how much moisture is in there and it'll just mess up your calibration and how much time and all of the things. So if you're going to work from fresh, it all needs to be fresh. If you're going to work from frozen, it all needs to be frozen. So now we're going to let this sit. Freeze drying can take anywhere from 24 to 36 hours. I've never freeze dried fruit before, so I'm not exactly sure how long it's going to take. So I'll see you guys back when both the freeze dryer and the dehydrator are done. It has been 24 hours and the freeze dryer says it's done, so we're going to go ahead and stop it. And the food dehydrator has been going for 24 hours. And I'm going to go ahead and stop that one as well. I have not opened this yet. We have to release that valve that creates the pressure. And then we'll be able to open this door. I'm excited. All right. I think that's done. So that's a strawberry, banana, yep, I think these are all done. We're going to go ahead and unload all of our freeze dried goods. We're going to taste test them and there's a few more differences between freeze dried and dehydrated that we still need to go over. The ice that you see around this drum, that is where the moisture has been suctioned out of the food and it gets vacuumed up onto that drum. And you can either turn your freeze dryer off and defrost it, or you can run it one more time. I have found that I can run my freeze dryer twice before too much ice builds up and then you need to defrost it before you run another cycle. So that's what I'm gonna do because I already have it cooled and ready to go. I have some frozen peppers in my freezer from last year's garden. I wanna start emptying out that freezer for this year's garden produce. So I'm gonna be freeze drying that when we're done here. Here is our dehydrated mango and it is nice and dry along with our strawberries, pineapple and pears. 
turmeric and bananas. And last but not least, more pineapple and our apples. So you may notice the volume difference. These are the dehydrated, these are the freeze dried. When you freeze dry something, the size the item went into the freeze dryer is the same size the item comes out of the freeze dryer versus dehydrated, this one, it shrinks in size. You may also notice the color difference. Dehydrating, you are slightly cooking the food, very, very mildly, and that does concentrate the color versus the freeze dried, it stays almost exactly the same color. Here's another great example with the pineapple. This is the freeze dried pineapple and this is the dehydrated pineapple. The freeze dried pineapple is light, it's airy, it's fluffy, and the dehydrated pineapple is dry, it's kind of rubbery, and it's intensified in color. If I snap this, versus the dehydrated is nice and rubbery and flexible. So here's a perfect lineup of everything. We have our pears, it's freeze dried then dehydrated. Our apples, freeze dried, dehydrated, bananas. Now that I'm doing this, I wish I had dehydrated some that were sliced because these are freeze dried versus dehydrated. Our mangoes, freeze dried, dehydrated. Our strawberries, pineapple, and turmeric. A couple more differences between freeze dried and dehydrated. Freeze dried takes up more volume, more space than dehydrated. Freeze dried has about 99 point something percent of its water taken out of it, and so it weighs a lot less than something that is dehydrated because it has about 80 to 90 percent, a little bit more sometimes of its water content taken out. Because freeze dried has so little water content in it that it can store, if stored properly, up to 30 years. The best way to store something long term if you want this to stay shelf stable for 30 years is you need to get it sealed either using a mylar bag and an oxygen absorber or you can just store it in a mason jar with an airtight lid it just isn't going to last as long on your pantry shelf because as soon as this comes out of the freeze dryer because there's more moisture in the atmosphere than there is inside the freeze dried good it's going to start absorbing that moisture so you really want to get your freeze dried goods sealed as quick as possible it is important that you seal your dehydrated goods as well. It's not as critical that you get them sealed quite as quick as you would your freeze dried goods because they have more moisture content in them. Now, when I was reading on how long dehydrated stuff can last, I was reading anywhere from one to two years. I can tell you right now, if you have your dehydrated stuff sealed properly, it can last longer than that because I've had dehydrated stuff last in my pantry a whole lot longer than two or three years. Now, something that we did not do or discuss in this video yet is the biggest benefit of a freeze dryer versus a dehydrator is the fact that you can freeze dry entire meals in a freeze dryer and you can freeze dry more things than you can dehydrate. So the two things that I've experimented freeze drying in my freeze dryer that I can't do in my dehydrator is bone broth. That's probably one of my favorites and tomato soup because you can't can tomato soup if there's cream in it. I like to put cream, I like a tomato bisque, and so I have freeze dried a tomato soup, and it's absolutely delicious. All you have to do is add water to it, and you have an instant soup, and it takes up less space, because even though freeze dried things have more volume in their normal state, but if you powder them, then they take up a whole lot less space. Because you can freeze dry entire meals, that is one of the biggest benefits of a freeze dryer because Americans, like I said, waste about 33% of all the groceries and food that comes into their house. And instead of just throwing leftovers, soups in the freezer, you could throw them in the freeze dryer. And you can really freeze dry almost anything, any meal. I still need to work on experimenting because I haven't done, I haven't done any protein except for bone broth in my freeze dryer. So maybe that's something we'll do next. One of the last things I wanna do is reconstitute some strawberries. And I wanna see how they reconstitute. I have just some lukewarm water here, and we're gonna let those sit for a minute and reconstitute. It has only been about 10 seconds, and this strawberry has the texture of a fresh strawberry. That is crazy. This is still completely hard, so we'll let that sit there for a minute or two. I wanna give 
this strawberry that we reconstitute, this freeze-dried strawberry, a taste test. Wow. That tastes exactly like a fresh strawberry and it has the texture of a fresh strawberry. That is crazy. I don't think a dehydrated strawberry is something you're gonna to wanna to reconstitute and use in anything. Honestly, those freeze-dried strawberries, you could reconstitute those and you could put them on top of a pound cake. You could put them in a dessert if you needed to mix them in a batter. Anything you would use fresh strawberries for, you could absolutely reconstitute these and use them. This dehydrated slash rehydrated strawberry is still pretty crunchy. Really, really good. I just probably wouldn't go through the effort of reconstituting it and trying to turn it into anything except for a delicious snack. We couldn't talk about a freeze dryer versus a dehydrator if we didn't talk about the cost of the actual unit themselves. My Excalibur dehydrator, the first one I bought was on Facebook Marketplace and I spent $150 and now they can cost anywhere between $250 to $450 and up and up if you get the really big ones like the 15 trays and things like that versus a freeze dryer is gonna run you anywhere from $2,000 to $3,600 depending on which size you get. And it doesn't cost that much more to go from a medium to a large. And because it is such a big investment, I would just spend and save a little extra if you're gonna do it and get the large one. I love my food dehydrator and I love my freeze dryer. I think there's a place for both. I think if you're first getting into food preservation, it might be good to start with a dehydrator and see if it's something that you enjoy doing. And if you're really into it, then go ahead and make that plunge and get a freeze dryer. The biggest thing is there are limitations with a food dehydrator. Freeze dryers can do a lot, lot more. The freeze dryer I have certainly doesn't replace my dehydrator, but it's opened up a whole new world of food preservation of things that I just couldn't do before I had my freeze dryer. If there's anything I miss between the difference of a freeze dryer and a food dehydrator, I certainly am not an expert on either one of these. I'm just passionate about food preservation and eating as best as possible. And I find that dehydrating and freeze drying my own foods, I can buy things that are in season, I can grow and preserve my own food. And that's why I have gotten into this. So if you guys have any tips or tricks about freeze drying, dehydrating, please leave them down in the comments and we can all learn from each other. Let me know what your favorite things are to freeze dry and what your favorite things are to dehydrate. Like I said, I'm still new to freeze drying and I'm just loving it the more and more I do it. I wanna say thank you for taking time out of your day to spend with me. If you wanna watch the other things I freeze dried, I'll put a freeze dry playlist right here and I'll put some other food preservation methods down here like canning and dehydrating if you wanna watch those. I want to say thank you for taking time out of your day to spend time with me, and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye, guys.